What we've seen and heard so far is that additive synthesis and realism don't really go hand in hand. It is possible to get a fairly realistic pipe organ sound, but beyond that, it's going to be very difficult for a computer to analyze a signal in real time and generate the necessary uh, banks of sine waves and continue to generate those to get the full story of that sound, to keep it realistic for the entire duration of that sound. And that's why something like sampling or physical modeling is going to make more sense if you're going for realism. However, additive synthesis and the whole idea with additive synthesis is actually something that's uh, very widely used when you're trying to generate, you know, quote unquote, unreal sounds or more synthetic sounds. And soft synths today go about you know, this process in two ways. One is, is more sample based where you might take a single cycle waveform of say a saw wave from some old vintage like Juno synthesizer. And that's used as the basis for the sound source, which is then shaped with filters and envelopes and all the stuff we'll be getting to later on in the course. The other way to go about this is by using formulas. And when you think formulas, you want to think additive. All right. And um, this is why instruments like Razor instruments like laser bass, which we'll be looking at both of those in upcoming videos. That's why those are so often used for creating like low sub bass sounds. It's because with a formula, you can create something perfect. So you can create a very clean and clear low end picture using formulas, using additive synthesis as compared to using like an old school vintage synthesizer, like a mini Moog or something where it might be a little bit more dirty down there. It takes a lot of work to, um, you know, keep the image uh, or keep your mix a little bit more clean, which is, uh, you know, all the rage nowadays anyway. So we have here a uh, sawtooth wave, but I'm going to clear that out and I'm just going to turn this into a sine wave. And so what we're going to see when we flip this up to the top, this is our FFT view up here. And we can see that we have just one little bar. And this one bar is the first bar is the fundamental and it's just a single sine wave. So we'll bring up our span. We'll bring this over. And we can see that like so, but if we want to add to that, we can very easily do that by just drawing in. And this is going to follow the harmonic series. So this is like the uh, first overtone after the fundamental, then the second, then the third, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And as I bring the second one up, we can see that this does follow that logic. We're at that A3, which is 220. So we should expect to see the next overtone at 440. And then the next one, if we draw that in, should be coming up at 660. Get rid of this fourth one here. And let's see if that is correct. It is around 660. And it would continue on like this following the harmonic series. Uh, the fun part is that we can actually do things like, say, draw odd harmonics over. So we do have this one even harmonic. But after that, if I just want to draw in like odd harmonics, I can do that. And you can actually zoom this way out and go like really high. Like if I want to do something that's going to really annoy you, I could pop something up way down here. That actually may be so high up that you're not even hearing anything. Let's bring it back to like somewhere like here. There we go. Just trying to drive you guys crazy. So you can see that that one is sticking out really high. And this is just an additive process. We're just putting sine waves on top of sine waves on top of sine waves. And this is the basis, really, at least in this instrument, for the wavetables that are generated. So if you think about it, we can create like a morphing sound um, something that, you know, additive would have to try to do to be realistic, you know, constantly adjusting for that sound. Well, we can do something similar to that, only it's not going to be realistic, but it should give us some kind of interesting sound. So if I go in here and I grab anything, let's just choose like uh, this pulse width modulation Juno here. What we can see is that by changing the wavetable position, what we're really doing there is altering what's going on with that har with the harmonics, with the partials above. So if we look at this here, we can go Let's try to Right, so you see those sine waves changing. Yeah. 
And so this morphing is really an additive process, right? It's going from one to the other, at least in this instrument, that's how that's working. And then if we wanted to put an envelope, say on this, we can now have it go through and change. And so in theory, we could always go in and like kind of edit this thing out. And uh, for example, we could, uh, we should be able to add another one. And on this one, I'm going to change it to just being a sine wave. This is going to be very bizarre. And then I'm going to go from here to here and I'm going to morph between those. All right, so now when we go at the very end, it's going to turn into a sine wave. And so it's going to be a really drastic cutoff. Um, not the same way that like a low pass filter would work, but at the same time, it is altering that balance. Oh, I don't think it saved it. I think I have to go in there and actually save. Or I may have just done something wrong. Oh, it's because it's the other way around. I'm sorry, guys. So let's actually just flip this around and do this. And we'll see at the top then how it suddenly turns and transforms into a sine wave. Right, and we can see how then the FFT compensates for that. All right, so that's just one example here inside of Serum. Uh, we're going to look at another example inside of a synthesizer called Absinthe. Absinthe is one of the deeper synthesizers on the market in terms of all the things you can do with it. But one of the things you can do with it is what we just looked at in Serum, which is creating a custom waveform using more of an additive technique via, you know, computer formula, computer algorithm. So right now we just have our sine wave. If we want to go in and edit that, we can very easily do that. Head over to the spectrum view and start to add on some partials. So this is going one at a time, or we can put a bunch in like this. Or we could go and actually draw things in manually if we wanted. And I'm going to choose this option here. create all sorts of cool and interesting um, waveforms ourselves, either by drawing it or working in the spectrum view. Now, this instrument also gives you the ability to do more of a wavetable type action, but they call it morphing, but it's really kind of the same exact thing. So if I go back over to the patch here, I'm going to load up one of these morph waves. We'll just choose analog one, and then we can go in and we can see the morph tab is now open. We can now morph between these two waveforms that you see and at the bottom is the readout and then obviously you could go in with those waveforms and you could you know adjust them however you wanted to so um very cool very interesting instrument and there are a few more that give you this ability i know zebra is one of them a lot of the newer instruments are giving you this sort of feature um, mainly because it's just something that's very possible and something that can help you take your basic waveforms and make them at least a little bit unique if that's something that you're chasing or is something that you're after. All right. Thanks for watching.